Washington. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm deeply disappointed that this committee is holding another one-sided hearing that's more about politics than fact-finding. The attacks on women's health just never seem to stop. Meanwhile, we're ignoring a long list of bipartisan policies that deserve our attention. Right now, we could be talking about the much-needed updates to email privacy laws. We could be talking about leveling the playing field for brick-and-mortar stores. Or we could finally get to work on our country's broken immigration system. But instead, we're wasting even more time on an investigation that the majority clearly prejudged before receiving a shred of evidence from Planned Parenthood. It's shameful, Mr. Chairman. This committee should be focused on facts, not ideology. And so far, there are no facts to substantiate the claims made by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, no evidence that Planned Parenthood has engaged in unlawful activity, period. So let's talk about what we do know. We know that 2.7 million Americans receive essential health care every year through Planned Parenthood. 78% of Planned Parenthood patients are low income with incomes at or below 150% of the federal poverty level. In my home state of Washington, Planned Parenthood annually provides more than 34,000 cancer screenings. And across the country, the services provided by Planned Parenthood help prevent more than 500,000 unintended pregnancies every year. That last number should give my colleagues pause. If we want to reduce the number of abortions provided in this country, attacking Planned Parenthood is certainly not the way to do it. But at this point, it's clear that this investigation isn't about gathering facts at all. It's just part of an extreme ideological agenda to defund Planned Parenthood and take away a woman's constitutional right to choose. Um, Ms. Fredrickson, your testimony mentions that Planned Parenthood provides birth control and family planning, family planning counseling to 2.1 million patients each year. Could you speak about how women's access to birth control is related to their economic security? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's a vital part of women's economic security. Women being able to control when, whether, they have children um, has been a critical part of them being able to enter uh, not quite into equal status in the uh, American economy, unfortunately, but they're on their way. Women are doing better. Women are able to provide better for their families uh, by ensuring that they have the families that they can uh, at the time uh, when they, when they want to have families or not to have children when they don't want to have children. And what would be the impact on women if access to birth control through parenthood would be restricted? Well, there would be many more unintended pregnancies, and ultimately there would be many more abortions. So the consequences of defunding Planned Parenthood would certainly be to lead to an increase in abortions in this country, and it would certainly undermine women's access to basic contraceptive care, uh, which would undermine their ability to earn a, earn, a, earn a living and control their own economic well-being. And so you believe that it'd be harder for women to plan their families, plan their careers, if Congress decided to defund this organization? It's been a vital part of women being able to have independence, to be able to exercise, uh, de to determine their own fertility, to determine when and whether they have children. It allows them to enter into the workforce. It enables them to, to take care of the children that they have. It enables them to be treated more fairly in the workplace because they do uh, have the choice about uh, whether and, and when to have children. And my colleagues have been across the aisle have been talking about um, how if Planned Parenthood wasn't, uh, if Planned Parenthoods were not available in their regions, it would no, have no impact on women's access to health care. Again, I ask you, what would be the impact on, on women throughout our country if Planned Parenthood was not available for health care? Well, I think the fact that, that already when we've discussed how one in five American women, that's 20 percent of American women in their lifetime will use uh, Planned Parenthood services. That's an enormously large number, and 2.7 million uh, people per year use Planned Parenthood services. The loss of those, uh, the ability to, to use a Planned Parenthood health center would be enormous. And I think you referenced a study that says that there are not other community health centers or other places who would be able to serve those, that same population. Right. The expert opinion of the American Public Health Association says that there's just not the ability to absorb that capacity, that those women would just go unserved. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I yield back.